In the headlines, DAT warns governments to go back to the drawing board on what it calls a vague salary offer. Owner of El Express de Zil considers resuming service to Portsmouth and this year's Female Queen Leaders awardee takes her platform to an international stage. I am Kenny Williams with the Channel 5 News. I'll be back with the details right after this. First up, president of one of the unions negotiating for salary and non-salary benefits for its employees says it is not pleased with government's latest offer. Andrea Lee has that story. On Friday, 7th of July, the Dominica Association of Teachers, DAT, received a letter from the Chief Establishment Officer, Gloria Joseph, regarding the ongoing round of negotiations for the 2015-2018 triennium. Celia Nicholas, who heads the DAT, says the offer for the first year under review is not acceptable to the association. In her letter, she did um, mention that there is uh, the first thing is that impose a salary raise freeze for the year 2015 to 2016. Now, we had not accepted that in our submission. We said we are not in a position to accept a wage freeze for 2015 to 2016. So since we just got the letter on Friday, we need to discuss it. I mean, if there's going to be any wage freeze for 2015 to 2016, then there has to be a significant trade-off, very significant trade-off for that year. According to Nicholas, the offer being made for the second year is vague and needs clarification from the government negotiating team. Then the second year, um, public officers who retired in 2015 will receive one off payment equivalent to one month's salary. To us, this is very vague. We need to know which month because in the case of teachers within an academic year because of the status of the teacher, that, that teacher's salary may change three times for the year or two times for the year. So we have to know which month, the selection, we did bring that up already, what month are you going to use to decide for the individual receiving that one month pay. And on, of, the third one was a one-off payment equivalent to two month salary for the year 2016 to 2017. Again, we have that question. The DAT boss says that thus far, only the offer for the third year of the 2015-2018 triennium is favorable to the association. The salary increase of 3% for the year 2017 to 2018. Of course, this is the most pleasurable one. And one of the things that we are saying, I mean, for future negotiations and for negotiations on a whole, it is not a good principle that the employer starts on 0%. Because already it, it, it puts a wet blanket on the negotiations. If it cannot be given in cash, then upfront an equivalent or something, a trade-off should be given so that we start the negotiations with, with a hopeful spirit, with a spirit of compromise if it is necessary. The next course of action for the DAT is to respond via letter and wait for a scheduled date to continue the negotiations. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. Still on the education scene where 25 teachers will be added to the cadre of trained professional teachers by the end of the week. The announcement was made by Minister for Education while addressing the start of a summer workshop for teachers on Monday. Saint-Jean said the program under which the educators were pursuing a master's degree was sponsored by the government of Dominica. I've been advised, P.S., that by the end of this week, 25 uh, administrators and senior teachers will complete their master's of science degree in education leadership and management from the University of the West in this open campus, Dominica. I want to commend those administrators and senior teachers because this program was actually funded by the government of Dominica under the Education Enhancement Project. And I'm pleased to note that reports reaching me indicate 
that all of the individuals have performed creditably. Congratulations to you. The minister further went on to reiterate his ministry's commitment of the development of the country's education sector. We strongly believe that programs such as what is being launched here today hold a definite benefit both for teachers and students. Our support in in-service training for teachers at the Dominica State College is, to my mind, the most consistent example of our drive towards professional development. Certainly, teacher training takes up the, a very large percentage of the budget of the Ministry of Education on an annual basis. In other news, Portsmouth could be added back to El Express de Zil's itinerary in the future. Idona Jean Baptiste has that story. Head of the French ferry service Roland Belmar says he could resume service to Portsmouth once there is a high demand for the service. He was responding to a call by managing director of HHV Wichich, Gary Ed, whose company serves as the ship's agent. Ed said he is very encouraged by how well the service to Dominica has bounced back after a low period some years ago. The vessel currently only calls at the Roseau Ferry Terminal. Um, there was a time where we were at the bottom and they were considering perhaps um, not ceasing calling here but reducing um, the calls dramatically and that would have been a disaster because a lot of people make a living from it in one way or the other. Of course we do, the people who work with us, the, the customs, immigration, are employed, police, etc., etc. So it, it has a, a multiplying effect. And I, I very much hope that um, as time goes on that we can resume calling in Portsmouth. Ed is optimistic that returning the service to the Portsmouth port could be a good business move to complement ongoing tourism developments. Maybe with these hotels that are under construction that will open hopefully next year, that there will be need for some of these guests coming into the French islands or Guadeloupe by, by large planes and uh, then making the connection to Dominica by ferry. So there are lots of, um, lots, there's lots of um, possibilities. And of course, next year too is reunion 40, is it? 40 years, I 40 think? Years, 40 yes. years. Yes. Hopefully, then we're going to have a lot more visitors coming in. Belmar explained the ferry stopped the Portsmouth route four years ago since it was not profitable. Of course, calling there induce extra cost if you don't cannot face them by sales is not but definitely we have spoken with a person in charge of this project that is not a project something to come next year uh, end of next year uh, in Portsmouth if there's a need if our passengers will definitely come back it's very easy for us to have calls in Dom in, in, in Portsmouth everything is set up there will not be a problem it will be definitely will be back in Portsmouth is there's a is there's a necessity is there's as traffic for it Meantime, Managing Director of El Express de Zil, Ronald Belmere, says high operation costs will make it difficult for the company to add more vessels to its fleet. While Belmere said he is not considering increasing the number of vessels, his vision is for the company to extend its service to Antigua and St. Vincent. The company operates three ferries plying between Dominica, Guadeloupe, Martinique, St. Lucia, Marie-Galant and Les Saints. Running this is very expensive. It's very expensive. Uh, what we would like to would be maybe extend our network uh, step by step. The idea one day we dream about it would be to have a connection going on to Antigua and in the south going on to St. Vincent. He pointed out that they are not attracting the satisfactory number of passengers to offer a regular service to those routes. At the present time, the traffic between St. Lucia and St. Vincent, the traffic between Guadeloupe and Antigua is too low. So we are organizing from time to time day charter from Guadeloupe to Antigua, from Martin to St. Vincent to try to develop the business and when it will be at a sufficient level maybe we'll come to a regular service but for now it's a bit too early 
because the figures are very low on this, on this, uh, this segment. In related news, the French ambassador to the OECS and Barbados has identified El Express de Zille as a conduit of promoting regional integration between the French West Indies and Dominica. His Excellency Philippe Ardenas was invited to address the official handing over ceremony of the Dubla renovated playing field and pavilion funded by El Express de Zille. As an ambassador of France in the Caribbean, one of my main priorities is to support and encourage a better regional integration of the French Caribbean territories, and especially Martinique, Guadeloupe, and Saint Martin. And a better regional integration begins with a better connection of the people in order to facilitate exchanges between French and Dominican citizens. So, on the ground, on a concrete way, and on a daily basis, the Express Diesel is a wonderful instrument of rapprochement of French and Dominican people. And in that way, this company has been a real ambassador of France, and I can consider its manager, my fellow citizen, Roland Benmar, a diplomat colleague. His Excellency Ardenas acknowledged the key role El Express de Zille played in providing relief and rescue services to Dominica following Tropical Storm Erica. Roland Belmar decided and organized the modification of the rotations of boats in order to help the coast villages that were isolated from other places in the island and also to facilitate sanitary evacuations. You are watching Channel 5 News, the little girl who stole judges' hearts to win a national reading competition. That and more, next. Welcome back. An award-winning, community-service-oriented Dominican is set to inform the world about innovative practices to care for people living with dementia. Founder of the Dominica Dementia Foundation, Rihanna Patterson, will meet and discuss with leading international stakeholders in dementia science. Dementia is a chronic disorder of how the brain functions caused by brain disease or injury. It is marked by memory disorders, personality changes, and impaired reasoning. She is set to attend the Alzheimer's Association International Conference, expected to run from July 16 to 20 in London, England, and it features researchers, next-generation investigators, clinicians, among other stakeholders. Patterson was among 60 young people from across the Commonwealth, and the two from Dominica who received the Queen's Young Leaders Award on June 29 at Buckingham Palace. She received the Queen's Young Leaders Award for helping to ease the impact dementia has on on families and individuals. Well, actually this Sunday, I travel again to England to speak at the AAIC, which is Alzheimer's Association International Conference. I'll be speaking on innovative dementia care practices and giving a report on Dominica Dementia Foundation. I'll be speaking on the last day and um, it's basically a uh, an area where scientists, neurologists, and different persons in the fields of dementia come to network, speak about um, what their, fi their findings and research and all of that. So it will be very, very helpful for me and I'll pass that down to the foundation as well. Patterson continues to call for Dominican society to become friendlier towards people living with dementia. Well, we have World Alzheimer's Month, which is in September. We'll be doing a number of activities. We're hoping to have a cocktail, and it'll be our first year anniversary. So that's really exciting. So we're going to have our annual general meeting, you know, have a, a, a little celebration of our accomplishments so far. So it'll be really good. So that is um, carded for September, and then from there, you know, continue raising awareness, continue hel helping the elderly homes, see what programs we can implement in the elderly homes, you know, um, maybe have like a database of everyone who has dementia in Dominica, but like, you know, it's a long-term long kind of a situation, but yeah, that's basically um, what we'll be working on. A series of workshops geared towards developing areas in the school curriculum got underway on Monday. The two-week workshop being held for principals and teachers of primary and secondary schools will focus on a number of areas, top among them, literacy. 
All 60 primary school principals will be exposed to the budding rights, writing to respond process as an approach to improving reading and writing. Tuesday and Wednesday, 60 primary school teachers who have been designated as their school's literacy coordinators will attend the training. While the principals will be engaged in understanding the management of the program, the teachers will be learning the process itself and how to implement within their classrooms. Still with literacy, our literacy coordinators will also receive a week's training under the Early Learners Program with a focus on reading. Another high point of the workshop is information communication technology. Fountain further went on to explain that the move to do CXC online is even more reason for teachers to be well versed in the use of ICT. Also starting today is a week-long training in AutoCAD, a software tool to be used by our teachers of technical drawing at the secondary level. And since 2002, students had the option of using computer-aided drafting, referred to as AutoCAD. Today, with the introduction of online testing, it is no longer going to be an option, and therefore our teachers must be trained in the use of the software to be able to pass on the knowledge to our students. Starting today and running for the next two weeks will be the IT for Dominica Summer Institute. These workshops will be facilitated by our Canadian counterparts from Alberta, Canada, together with local counterparts. Physical education and TVET and CVQ seminars are also on the agenda for the teachers' workshop. Government has invested a quarter of a million dollars to benefit the people of Lubia since a visit by the Prime Minister four months ago. Prime Minister Skerritt said he met unemployed youth of the community in March to hear their concerns, one of which was challenges facing the fishing trade. On Friday, he returned to the community to hand over three fishing boats valued at over $105,000. But it is also an opportunity to create employment. And that's what the government has been seeking to do across the country with the Small Business Development Unit, providing grants to create jobs. Because while the government may not be able to employ everybody in the government system, but through this small business unit and the provision of grants to many individuals across Dominica, we're creating jobs. Prime Minister Skerritt said there are other promises made which the government has acted on. He made a commitment to further reducing the unemployment rate in Lubia. In addition to the fishing industry, we have also listened to your calls for lighting of the playing field. And I am pleased to tell you that since we met, I approved the funds which are now at the village council. And I was informed that the contractor has already begun working. With regards to my promise to engage all of you in the cleanup and beautification of the community through the NEP, an initial group of 10 people has already been retained and will commence work on July 17, just about a week from today. <laughs> Lastly, with the new budget year fast approaching, I want to reiterate the promise I made when we last met to continue to assist small businesses here in Lube and in the rest of the country. We have already, in Lube, improved the lives of over 50 people by investing a quarter of a million dollars. And I assure you that this is just the beginning because every unemployed person we can get employed is one unemployed person less in the country. If it's one day I'm happy, it's today because now we have a, a chance, a tool to go out there and make our own money for ourselves and to help our family and our friends out there, you know. And it took eight-year-old Kenny Lee Barron to bring the title of the DBS Courts Reading Competition champion to the St. John's Catholic Primary School for the first time. Kenny Lee outdid 10 other students to win Friday's final competition. She will represent the country in St. Lucia at the OECS reading competition later this year. She won NDFD prizes for the best reader in round two. A $2,000 cash prize from DBS is among her rewards. Her school will also get $2,000. To 
be able to win the reading competition for my school for the first time and in the north. What I would say that hard work pays off. Shande Avril of Ebenezer Primary placed fifth. Kobe Daru of Convent Preparatory was fourth, and Noah Sorendo of Pioneer Prep and Joshua Burkard of Lighthouse Academy tied in second place. They will receive cash prizes. This year marked the 10th year of the competition, which was founded by broadcaster Felix Henderson. Another first in the competition this year was the participation of four male competitors. That's news. Sports is next. We begin with cricket where a powerful century by opener Evan Lewis helped put things in motion to help West Indies beat India by nine wickets in the only T20 match on Sunday. Batting first, India posted 190 for six in their 20 overs. Dennis Karthik contributed 48, Virat Kohli 39 and Rishad Pant 48. Jerome Taylor took two for 31 and Kestrick Williams two for 42. Set 191 to win, the West Indies just needed three men for the job when they replied with a stunning 194 for one in 18.3 overs. Evan Lewis punished the Indian bowlers to finish on a blistering 125 not out. His score included 12 sensational sixes, which was the highest individual score by any batsman in a chase in T20 internationals. Marlon Samuels contributed 36 to the win while Chris Gale was out for 18. Meantime, West Indies head coach Stuart Law says the bowling could have been better, but he was pleased with the chase. You know, the Indians started their batting innings um, you know, on a very good wicket, uh, fast outfield, small boundaries. Um, you know, I think we did really well to contain them to 190, to be honest. Um, you know, at one stage they were looking at 240, 250. Um, but you know, the, we didn't start very well with the ball, but we, we finished very well. You know, um, Jerome Taylor came back and bowled a, a good spell at the, at the death, picking up you know, vital wickets, as did Keswick Williams, picking up a couple of vital wickets as well. So to, to, to only chase two, 190 on, a, on, as I say, a small ground uh, flat wicket, um, it's going to take some chasing, but just saw one of, the, one of the better innings I've ever seen in T20 cricket. So um, Evan Lewis, hats off. Meantime, West Indies women got their first win in the ICC Women's World Cup when they defeated Sri Lanka by 47 runs on Sunday. Sent into bat, the Windies piled on 299 for nine. The efforts of Marisa Aguilera, 46 not out, and Deandra Dottin, 38, helped put the winning team ahead. S. R. Rakodi took three for 38 for Sri Lanka. With an unlikely target of 230, Sri Lanka crumbled on the 48th over to be bowled out for 182. Anissa Mohammed picked up 3 for 39, while Chanel Daly took 2 for 30 and Afi Fletcher 2 for 38. As of their match against Sri Lanka, West Indies women were in 6th place with England being in the lead. Sports continues with this item where Acting Minister for Sports, Honorable Kelva Daru, encouraged students to maintain a healthy balance between sports and academics. He said it helps set the foundation for holistic development. His comments came at the 25th Annual School Sports Awards Ceremony on the weekend. If the focus just remains at the school level on just the academics, all young people will be missing out on the holistic development towards their life. And so the combination of sport and academic continues to be a very integral part in the overall development in the lives of our young people. And I want to continue to encourage you, the students here this morning, to continue to balance both the sports and the academics. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you are able to master the two of them, you are well on your way to becoming a very successful individual in life. The event was held under the theme, Sport Development, a Shared Responsibility. 
Back with more cricket, there were wins for Granby Credit Union Colts, Starlight Sports Club and Police Sports Club in the National Leagues of the Dominica Cricket Association on the weekend. In the only Premier game on the weekend, Granby Credit Union Colts went on to secure a five-wicket win against Marino Blasters. Batting first, Blasters posted 88 runs with 27 of the bat of Kyle KB and Kershaski John Lewis, 26. Lex and Nixon took two wickets each. In reply, Colts scored 98 all out. Courtney Anselm contributed 40 without loss. Kyle KB took seven for 42. Batting a second time, Blasters scored 136. Kershaski John Lewis added 61 runs to his team's total. Courtney Anselm picked up 3 for 45, B. Defoe 2 for 32. In reply, Colts wrapped things up on 127 for 5 with 48 not out, compliments Roosevelt Merrifield. Alvin St. Jolly added 24. Kershaski John Lewis and Kyle Kaby took two wickets each. Meantime, in the Intermediate League, Starlights beat Gallia Hurricanes by 75 runs. Starlights took first to knock and scored 183 for 9 in 39.1 overs. Miguel Woodman and Bernard George scored 40 runs each and McDowell Paul 36. Felix Etienne took 3 for 53, Jeremy Mitchell 2 for 35 and John Matthew 2 for 37. Hurricanes was bowled out for 108 runs in 17.5 overs. Yante Dura was their highest scoring batsman with 14 runs. Ambrose Sylvester snatched 5 for 26, Kerwin Bermont 3 for 60 and Williams Thomas 2 for 21. Police beat Point Michel Cricket Academy in the other intermediate game, while the relevant authorities will determine the outcome of the Ruben Baker Christians versus Marino Evergreen match. Reports reaching Marpin Sports indicate Christians is claiming the right to game points since they were present at the game time and Marino wasn't. However, Christians did not have enough players at the ground at the time the game was called off. Finally, we can tell you that Spartanites edged out NCL PSS 21-20 to win the 2017 Big Edge Netball Second Division League on Sunday. The runner-up was NCL PSS in the Second Division. The First Division winner was Spartans and runner-up Jazz. First Division's MVP was Gigi Gordon and for Second Division, Mia Sylvester. That's all the sports for now. Join us next time. Coming up, the weather forecast. Good evening. Welcome to the weather report and forecast. I am Viola Pascal. The infrared satellite imagery showed limited cloud development across the islands during today. However, to the north of the area, we continue to have an area of deep convective clouds that are associated with an area of low pressure. The visible satellite imagery showed generally fair to partly cloudy conditions across the islands. The radar imagery also indicated limited shower activity across the islands during today. For tonight, expect fair to partly cloudy conditions with some brief showers mainly across the interior and eastern sections of the island. For tomorrow, expect partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy conditions with a few scattered showers. For the marine forecast, seas are expected to be slight to moderate with waves peaking near 5 feet. Over the next three days, Expect partly cloudy to cloudy conditions with a few scattered showers. Across the Caribbean, expect generally partly cloudy conditions with a few scattered showers. For the international cities forecast, expect some thunder showers in New York, partly cloudy skies in Miami and Caracas, some showers in London, and clear skies in Beijing. Sun rise at 5.41 a.m. and set at 6.40 p.m. For further information, call the Weather Hotline 447-5555 or visit the website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Do have a good evening. To end the news, the headlines again. DAT wants government to go back to the drawing board on what it calls a vague salary offer. Owner of El Express de Zille considers resuming service to Portsmouth and this year's Female Queen Leaders awardee takes her platform to an international stage. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Kenny Williams. To all our viewers around the world, we thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.